Now, what do you have here? This is a solar powered homemade dialysis machine. And what is it about? I mean, how did it come about? So, please, um, when a person's kidney gets injured or diseased from an accident or maybe from a disease like nephritis, and the kidney can no longer perform its function like it's supposed to, which is filtering of toxic substances from the body like urea, excess salt, and then dissolved minerals, and then maybe excess water, then the nephrologist will opt for a dialysis treatment to get those waste substances out of the body. And this is the dialysis treatment. So what happens is that blood is taken from the patient. Okay, first, um, an arterial, a vein, and then an artery are connected to form a fistula so that to give the patient a firm grip because a lot of pressure will be needed to take the blood from the patient and then go through the whole process. So the red tubes that you see here take the contaminated blood from the patient and then the peristaltic pump, they work under the principle of peristalsis. So it, it will, we have flexible tubes, it will contract and then relax to provide the right pressure for the flow to flow through. And it will come to the dialyzer here. You can see this fiber-like things here. Please, can you move the camera to this place? You can see this fiber-like things here. Inside is a fluid called a dialysate. So it has lower concentration than the contaminated blood. So the contaminants will move the blood into the solution through diffusion. And then it works using the principle of diffusion and osmosis. So the purified blood will then run back to the patient. So please, I would like to hand over to Presla to help us with the whole operation of the device. But, but before Presla comes in, what were some of the items that were, um, were used to build this dialysis machine, solar power dialysis machine? Okay. So please, this thing that you see, it's a local board. This dialyzer, we bought them the chips, we got them. And this one too, we bought them. But we looked at this one, like you see, to make this in our school. And then we have uh, blood pressure sensors, we have electrocardiogram, and we have these buttons. So most of them were locally sourced. Right. Um, okay. We have the solar panels, that one too, we got them. So our device operates on solar power. So in case there are power outages, the system can still run. Interesting, interesting. Um, you wanted your colleague to also come in. I don't know. Um, write your name. My name is Priscilla Sampama. Right. Priscilla, what do you have for us? Okay, so I will take you through how the whole thing works. Things. Okay, so she made mention the contaminants being um, stored in the patient. So we have two tubes, the red one and the blue one. The red one will take the contaminated blood from the patient um, through the peristaltic pumps to the dialyzer where the filtration will take place. So the blood is being filtered here and the contaminants will be remained in the dialyzer. And the filtered blood will pass through the blue blood tube back to the patient. So it's a cycle, it's continuous. Um, it will take about four hours for all the contaminants in the patient to be removed. Okay, so the patient's vitals will be measured. We have sensors built inside the machine. And all the vitals will be displayed on this screen. So the blood pressure, the electrocardiogram, blood flow rate and temperature, all of them will be displayed here for the doctor to see. We have also programmed the machine to make automatic adjustments to any deviations. For instance, when there is a significant drop in temperature, the machine may increase the pump speed for, um, to maintain the system, system to um, circulate. All the circulation should be um, constant and no deviation. So we also have visual alarms that will alert the doctor to any deviations that I talked about so that they can attend to the patients. Can this really work in a health facility? So please, honestly speaking, this is a prototype. So it has to undergo um, some process of refining before it can come to the market. So More scientific refinery before it can come to the market. So now what are we waiting for? We want investments because there are a lot of things that we are planning on adding. We want to add robust peristaltic pumps that will actually trap the air bubbles that we can even see because if they should go into a patient, they can end up killing the patient. So we have a lot of modifications to make. What really inspired the team to do this? Yes, thank you for the question. Please, we heard of the dialysis treatment situation in, in Kolebu Hospital, and then we got to know how dialysis treatment is very costly in our country. So we decided to create an, um, an affordable dialysis solution using locally sourced material so that the cost of production will come down so that in the next two to five years, we expect that this machine will be deployed to hospitals and clinics in Ghana so that the poor, those in um, 
far areas, those in the areas that don't reliable power supply can get access to affordable dialysis treatment.